Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Bob Dickerson from the First Baptist Church of Marion, Illinois. And this is the November 28th, 2021, Session 13 lesson from Explore the Bible series produced by Lifeway Christian Resources. Uh, as I say every week, I use the personal study guide of Explore the Bible series, and I also use the quick source discussion guide if ever you want to order it. Matter of fact, this is going to be the last uh, lesson of this quarter, and we're going to be starting a new lesson series in December. So if you wanted, if you are not part of our church uh, and uh, you're from somewhere else and you need a quarterly, uh, you can order that uh, online uh, from uh, Lifeway Resources. Our lesson today is entitled Restoration. And it's from a text found in Philemon, uh, verses 8 through 21. Uh, to summarize, believers forgive others since they too have been forgiven. You know, from almost the beginning of our marriage, uh, Robin and I, I have known that my wife has a fondness for antiques. But recently, I am beginning uh, to see that this may have really turned out to be a good long-term strategy. Since I'm moving into antique status myself, I'm hoping as the older I get, the better she'll like me. Well, you know, like the old pieces of furniture, she loves them. And uh, we live in an 1896 house, uh, and she's put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears and love into making that old home look good. Matter of fact, the desk that uh, I was writing these thoughts on uh, uh, earlier today, they've been restored by her to match our Victorian style house that we're living in. And as I look around the room, she spent countless hours utilizing her interior decorating skills to bring uh, this house back to its former glory. The desk is just one example. She had black and gold trim on it and that she painted on it and, and, uh, she has taken a piece that she most likely uh, spent little or nothing on to become a piece of showcase furniture uh, because she believes in working to restore things that are of value to her. And she sees the good in the old. Now, this letter to Philemon addressed the, the uh, severed relationship between a slave Onesimus and his master Philemon. Paul's goal was the title of this lesson and why I use that illustration of restoring old furniture. That's the title of this, restoration. How do we restore those relationships that we have with other believers? Well, our first point is this. Believers can encourage restoration between other believers. Philemon uh, uh, 1, 8 through 12 says this, For this reason, although I have great boldness in Christ to command you to do uh, what is right, I appeal to you instead on the basis of love. I, Paul, an elderly man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus, appeal to you for my son Onesimus. I became his father while I was in chains. Once he was useless to you, but now he is useful both to you and to me. I am sending him back to you. I am sending my very own heart. So how did Paul describe Onesimus? Well, he was a wayward slave who encountered Paul while in prison. Paul said that he became Onesimus' father. Now, it's not physically, of course. It was spiritually. And he refers to that. Uh, he's referring to his conversion, uh, Onesimus' uh, conversion. And we see that in 1 Corinthians 4, 14 through 15, uh, where Paul wrote, I'm not writing this to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children, for you may have countless instructors in Christ, but you don't have many fathers. For I became your Father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So uh, uh, he's writing to Philemon, who actually was from Colossae, and, uh, where the Colossian church is. So uh, uh, he would be familiar with this kind of terminology. It's interesting to note, and you, and you really don't pick up what this verse is saying unless you understand that the name Onesimus actually means useful. 
So as a wayward slave, Onesimus had been useless to his master Philemon. Uh, Onesimus had become useful again, uh, not just in his attitudes and his labor, but because he was made new in Jesus Christ when uh, Paul had the privilege of leading him to the Lord. So when we go back and, and read this, it, it says, once he was useless to you, but now he is Onesimus. <laughs> that word is his name, uh, is useful both to you and to me. And so uh, Onesimus had become useful again to go along with his name. Quick question. Does that kind of describe us? Are we useful to God in fulfilling his mission? Now, I know many of you are homebound, but you're still useful. There's, there's things that you can be used by God to do for him. Uh, sometimes people say, well, all I can do is pray. What do you mean all you can do is pray? Prayer is the power that, uh, uh, that, uh, that is given by God to those who agree with him. And uh, prayer is such a powerful thing in fulfilling God's emission, uh, emission rather. Uh, our agreement with God and each other for the gospel to be shared and spread is essential to defeating the devil. And please, those of you who are watching, uh, pray for me to be able to continue to do these lessons. Pray for my dedicated technical staff. We've been working a great deal preparing for the Christmas musical uh, uh, coming up on December 12, uh, 2021. And uh, we need your prayers because we're hoping that everything we do, Sunday school lessons, our worship services, uh, our musicals, uh, that all of it will lift up Jesus Christ. So some may be saved as a result of that. I remember one author one time, he used to talk about uh, prayer being prayer cover. In other words, uh, uh, praying to cover those who are working for the Lord. You can pray for our missionaries. You can pray, if you're from another church, pray for your pastor, uh, that God may be able to use them because these are, these are difficult times that we're in right now and uh, we need all the prayer cover we can get. I would say most of you have phones that uh, uh, use that communication with your phones to, to minister to others. And maybe you can't get out like you, like you did at one time, but you can make a difference in somebody's life or calling and checking up on them and, and, uh, and just giving them some words of, of scripture or words of encouragement. And uh, I'm sure that if you're one of our homebound members, I'd, I'd, I'd love to share with you some names of people and get you uh, our prayer list uh, so that uh, you could maybe get in contact with some of those folks. Now, if Onesimus was precious to Paul, why didn't uh, he just demand from Philemon his freedom? Well, that's just not the way Christianity works. Paul appealed to Philemon based on love instead of using his apostolic authority. Paul desired for them to demonstrate the restoration of the gospel in their relationship. He wanted it to be their, his decision, Philemon's decision, because he was in agreement with God. I want you to understand as you read this passage that Paul was not condemning or condoning slavery in this letter. These letters, this letter's attitude towards slavery Slavery greatly differed from what prevailed in the first century. And so he's not really talking about slavery, whether it's right or wrong, and we know it to be wrong. But in, in that culture, he was teaching them, how do you relate to one another when both of you are believers? And how do you relate to one another if one is a master and one is a slave? The application here is we should encourage restoration. And restoration begins with the gospel, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. Everything is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That's the same as restoration. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed the message of reconciliation 
to us. We've got to figure out how to get that message of restoration and reconciliation out there. Whether you're writing letters or whether you're sending text or emails, if you do such a thing, uh, or you're making phone calls, whatever means by which God can give you, then use it for his glory. Both, but restoration is always to be voluntary, not coerced. We can encourage, but unless both are in agreement with God to work things out according to his will, most likely nothing good will come from it. So we have to trust him in that. So the second point that we're looking at today is believers are to view each other as members of the same family. Uh, Verses 13 through 16. I wanted to keep him with me so that in my imprisonment for the gospel, he might serve me in your place. But I didn't, this is Paul speaking, but I didn't want to do anything without your consent so that your good deed might not be out of obligation, but of your own free will. For perhaps this is why he was separated from you for a brief time so that you may get him back permanently, no longer as uh, as a slave, but more than a slave, as a dearly loved brother. He is especially so to me. But how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord? So what are some examples of unselfish love found in these verses? Well, Paul sent Onesimus back to work things out rather than uh, stay to continue to help himself, Paul. Although it's not mentioned, Paul had convinced Onesimus to do the right thing to settle accounts. He willingly returned to Philemon without any indication whether it would end well or not. Our lesson writer said this, legally Philemon had several options. He could sell Onesimus or punish him for his crimes, but Paul urged him to choose mercy and grace over retribution. But whatever the decision, Philemon had to make the choice on his own without pressure from Paul. Out of respect, Paul left the decision with his friend and his uh, his uh, child in Christ. Paul would benefit greatly if Philemon would allow Onesimus to come back and stay and minister to Paul in his place. But Paul couldn't make that decision for Philemon. Philemon had to discern God's will and obey. So we see the second application is we should view each other as members of the same family. Not I'm higher than you or I'm better than you or anything like that. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And as it's been said uh, for years and years and years, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Uh, But Paul wanted uh, Philemon to recognize Onesimus as a brother in Christ and not as a slave. Paul encouraged Onesimus to see the situation through God's eyes and not from a human perspective. Now, a biblical example of this uh, would be Joseph. You remember what happened. Joseph got sold into slavery by his brothers, and, but he rose to the, the height of being the second in command uh, of the Pharaoh in Egypt. And there was a great famine, and so his brothers came to get food and did not recognize Joseph, his brother. But Joseph chose to forgive them, and he saw God in it, and he saw that God had put him into that place where he could save his family and save basically the Jews because that was kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jacob uh, had uh, 12 sons, which became the 12 tribes of Israel. And, uh, and so God used Joseph greatly, and he saw that. So he forgave his brothers and took care of them. Uh, so the question uh, that we need to ask ourselves is, who might we need to set, set reconciliation with or seek restoration with? That could very well be something that you would want to consult with your commander-in-chief about. Now, I know that when you break ranks with somebody and you've had uh, uh, harsh words or you've had uh, big disagreements, it's hard. But I'm telling you, if you agree with God and that other person would would agree with God as well, there might be a chance that your relationship could be restored and that you both could, again, be useful to the Lord 
uh, in his work. The last point is this. Believers are to welcome other believers as a result of a shared faith. Uh, Verses 17 through 22 says, so if you consider me as a partner, again, this is Paul speaking. So if you consider me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. And if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge it to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it. Not to mention to you that you owe me even your very self. Yes, brother, may I benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Since I am confident of your obedience, I am writing to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. Meanwhile, also prepare a guest room for me, since I hope that through your prayers, I will be restored to you. Well, what gospel truths have helped Philemon to do the right thing and, 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 and restore Onesimus? Well, the lesson writer writes, Paul offered to reimburse whatever the wayward servant owes Philemon, urging his friend to charge those expenses to his account. Now, the personal sacrifice would be worth the effort if he could mediate a resolution, Paul thought. Through this, Paul also demonstrated sacrificial love for both men. Scholars have noted how his actions illustrated the sacrifice of Christ who reconciles rebels to their master by paying their debt. Christ took on a vastly larger debt for us on the cross. And he wanted Philemon to think about that when deciding what to do with this one who needed forgiveness, Onesimus. Paul exhorted Philemon to humble himself for a fellow believer as Christ humbled himself for us. So the application to this point is we should welcome other believers because of our shared faith. Have you ever forgiven a debt to someone who didn't deserve it? Through the years, I've had uh, people ask me for money with a promise. I'll I'll pay you back. I I get a check next week. I'll pay you back. Well, I have forgiven many of those debts through the years. And I believe every time that I did, it was because God was leading me to do it. Now, not always does God lead me uh, in that direction because the abuse of money in other areas uh, was putting me in a position of funding misdeeds instead of real needs. Uh, and that would cause me not to give them something uh, as a result. But for the most part, and the point is this, especially when dealing with fellow believers, it is to seek the will of God. He will always let us know what is right and what is wrong so that we can love him back by always doing what is right for his glory. Let me summarize this lesson in a few sentences. Like Paul, believers can support healthy relationships among other believers and seek to encourage restoration. Like Onesimus, we should humbly seek restoration for our broken relationships to put things right. And like Philemon was being called to do, we should treat other believers as family. Here's our personal challenge for this week. Invite the Holy Spirit to reveal any relationships in your life that are in need of restoration. Prayerfully consider how Christ's uh, life will motivate you into action. I remember back in my studies of English literature some of the poetry of Elizabeth Barrett Browning. What you may not know about her was uh, uh, she had hurt herself in an accident or something had happened uh, that caused her to be uh, nearly an invalid for for many years. Uh, And so she lived under her, under the under her father's strict rules and and for a long time. Uh, But she finally, in letter writing, uh, met this man through writing letters, uh, uh, Robert Browning, and she fell in love with him and he wanted to marry her. But because the father was uh, so strict, they ended up having to to, to elope. Well, they moved away uh, uh, to Italy, I believe, and... uh, Elizabeth wrote a letter to her father every single week. 
trying to restore the relationship, trying to ask forgiveness that she loved Robert and she wanted to be his wife and, and he was good to her. And she was getting quite a career now as a, as a, as a poet and an author. Um, she would write to him and ask for his forgiveness and ask that they could restore the relationship, ask if they could uh, start uh, uh, corresponding again. It wasn't too many years later that she received a box of all the letters. Actually, it was 10 years. She received a box of letters, and none of them had been opened. I'm sure that broke her heart. I would think that it would. But uh, she never gave up trying to restore the relationship that she had with her earthly father. And let me just compare that to our relationship with God. He wrote us a book, a library really of 66 books that contain love letters from God the Father to us. And the question that I want you to think about today, are we reading those letters or are we sending them back to the Father unopened? He has messages for us. He has insights. He has encouragement for us. And sometimes he is encouraging us to be restored with him so that in his power, you can be restored with others. I want to have a prayer for you right now and all the relationships, especially coming into the holiday season. I know that God wants us to be right with one another because that's the way we show that we're right with him. Father, I come to you in prayer right now, thanking you for who you are. And Lord, I, I don't know the lives of everybody that watches this program, but I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, many of them have some relationships that, uh, that are broken. I pray for restoration, Lord. I pray if there's any that's having problems with other people in their church, that, that as believers, they would come together and try to agree with the Lord and, and forgive one another so that they can move forward working together for the glory of God. So, Father, I pray for restoration. I pray, Father, that uh, you would just bless those that listen to this each week. And I pray, Lord, that you would just lay healing on them physically, mentally, and spiritually as they strive to be restored with you and restored with the others that you love. Thank you, Jesus, for this lesson. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.